You wanna shake it really, really well to make sure that the fragrance oil gets into all the beads. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Eva. If you're not new here, thank you so much for returning. I'm so excited for today's video because I'm gonna show you guys how to make a car freshie. A car freshie is a cute car accessory that has a scent that makes your car smell amazing. Car freshies is actually what started my business. That's the only thing I was selling when I first started. So I wanted to show you guys these cute car freshies that I made. These are a little bit more advanced. Today I'm just gonna be showing you the basics, but as I continue to make YouTube videos, I will be sure to show you guys exactly how I made these and how I designed the cardstock and how I got the cardstock on there and all that stuff. But for today, we're just gonna go basic. I'm gonna show you guys everything that you need and everything that I use to start making them. So let's just get right into the video. Okay, so this is everything that I use. I'll be sure to link everything in the description down below. So first off, you're gonna need aroma beads. This is what the Car Freshie is made of. They're little plastic beads that absorb oil. You are going to need fragrance oil of your choice. You're gonna need twine or string to hang your freshener. You're gonna need a digital scale to weigh out your fragrance oils because the beads can only absorb so much oil. You're gonna need mica powder or candle dye, whatever you wanna color your beads with a mason jar, some nails. Um, I like to use the ones that don't have any ridges just because they're easier to slide out once the freshie's done. Cookie cutter of your choice. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to do a car freshie. It's just simple and everyone loves the cow one. It's one of my best sellers, so I chose that shape. Baking pan. I like to use a non-stick pan because if you do, you, you most likely won't have to use parchment paper. A lot of people use parchment paper, but I honestly never have and my freshies don't get stuck or anything like that. Um, to store the freshies, I use um, scent proof bags. They have to be scent proof. If they're not, the bag will um, slowly take the scent out of the freshie. So make sure the bags that you're using are scent proof. And then I just like to use these Ziploc bags just to color my freshies. Um, some people use little um, Tupperwares or little glass jars. This is just easier for me because I get to throw them away or reuse them if I want. So that's just what works for me. Okay, so the first thing that I do is preheat my oven. I put it on 350 and let it warm up. So next I'm gonna show you guys how to scent your beads. So you're gonna turn on your scale. You're gonna get your mason jar and you're gonna put it on the scale. It's gonna weigh out the mason jar. You do not want that. You wanna zero it out because you actually need to weigh your fragrance oil. So you're gonna zero it out. I'm gonna be using this um, Bikini Bottom from Stay Fresh with Peanut. The ratio that I use is three ounces of fragrance oil to 12 ounces of beads. Um, so basically four ounces of beads to one ounce of fragrance oil. So I'm gonna go ahead since my scale is at zero, I'm gonna pour in my fragrance oil until I see that there's three ounces in there. Very simple, very easy. So almost to three. All right, so it's 3.1, that's fine. So I have three ounces of fragrance oil in there. So now I'm gonna zero out my scale again because now I need to weigh out 12 ounces of beads. So I'm gonna zero it out. So now it's at zero, so now let's pour in our aroma beads. This is where my cute little cup comes in handy. So I'm gonna keep pouring beads until it says 12 ounces here. This is my favorite thing to do because it's so satisfying. It does get messy. Some people use a funnel. I just have never done that, but you totally can. Just to make it easier and if you don't wanna make a mess. All right, okay, so 12 ounces of beads right there. Now you're gonna grab your jar, put the lid on it. You wanna shake it really, really well to make sure that the fragrance oil gets into all the beads. So this is normal for your jar to look very wet and the fragrance oil is gonna sink all the way to the bottom. This is normal. I set these in my front room and every time I pass by the front room every few hours, I'll shake them. So you wanna shake every few hours until they're fully dried. Um, so every scent is different, but it takes about one to five days to dry. If some dry in a day, that's okay. If some dry in five days, that's okay. If they never dry, that could mean 
that you put too much fragrance oil like i said these beads can only absorb so much oil so if you put too much they're never gonna dry and you're gonna have to keep adding more beads and that's just a hot mess so i do not recommend some people don't use a scale i highly recommend to use a scale it's gonna make your life so much easier so you're not adding beads adding fragrance oil and so on and so on like I said, every so often you're gonna shake every time you pass by just to make sure that all the beads are getting absorbed with oil. Um, after one to five days, depending on the scent, this is what your jar should look like. You can tell they're very dry. They're not sticking to the glass jar. This is what they're supposed to look like when they're ready to bake. So you can obviously tell there's a huge difference. Um, once my beads do dry like this, I do wait seven to 10 days to bake them. Just just to be safe, I mean, I've heard it helps the scent last longer. Some people say it makes no difference. So it's just personal preference. I do wait, but you also can bake right after they're done drying. Okay, so our oven is preheated. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side. So for now, we're gonna use a scent that I already have ready, which this is the scent Black Ice. This part is optional. I'm gonna lay down some parchment paper. This is just if you do not wanna waste beads and you wanna get the perfect measurement. So I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna fill up the cookie cutter to know how much beads we're gonna use. I like to fill mine up to the top, but not too much to the top because then it won't bake all the way through if you put too much, but basically almost to the top is how I do it. So we'll put a little bit more. I don't like my freshies thin, but again, that's personal preference. Everyone does make these differently. That's just what works for me. I like some thick freshies. All right, so that looks about good there. So then we're gonna remove the cookie cutter. We're gonna grab our little plastic baggie where we're gonna um, color our beads. You have to be very careful with this part because these beads go everywhere. So I grab it like that. I'm gonna pour it into our little bag where we're gonna color the beads. When using mica powder, a little bit goes a long way. You don't want to put too much because your freshies will fall apart. They won't bake all the way through. So I just put like literally one little scoop, if even that. Sometimes I'll put a little bit less. And then you want to add more as you need it. So you want to start off small. And if you feel like you need a little bit more, then just add a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to shake it really well. Now we got our colored white beads. The color is beautiful. So let's move this to the side. Now we're gonna grab our cookie cutter and then we're gonna grab our nail. We're gonna put the nail where you want your hole to hang. I like to put mine right in the center. Then you're gonna grab your beads and you're gonna go ahead and pour it into the cookie cutter. Just like that. I like to use another nail to move the beads around into the ears. All right, and you wanna make sure that your beads are flat so that it bakes evenly. So you wanna make sure they're flat and even all around the cookie cutter. ready to be put into the oven every oven is different so when you're just starting i highly recommend watching your freshie my oven i do eight to ten minutes at 350 um, but like i said everyone's oven is going to be different so make sure you really watch and then once you get the hang of it you'll know what time and temperature to use that's just what works for me so i'm going to go ahead and put this in and then i'll see you guys in eight to ten minutes Okay, I just pulled this out of the oven. You can tell that the beads are fully stuck together. Um, whenever it's still hot, they do look a little bit wet, I guess you can say. Um, so I let them cool for about five to eight minutes. And I like to pop them out of the cookie cutter when they're a little bit warm. So I'll show you guys how I do that. Some people say they have trouble when they take them out, but I've never had trouble. I do not use parchment paper. They just pop right out for me. So I'll be sure to record myself doing that. While we're waiting for that freshie to cool down, I wanted to show you guys these more advanced freshies. Look how cute they came out. Let me know what y'all think of them in the comments. Okay, our freshie is now cooled down. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do it without parchment paper. So it's already a nonstick pan, so look how easy it came off. It just came right off. So next, I'm just gonna pop out the freshie just like this. It's super easy. Then I'm gonna push the nail through like this. Let me use this so I don't mess up my new pan. 
see how it just slides out because the nail doesn't have any ridges so then I literally just pull it out just like that. It's so easy, you guys. Now I'm gonna take some kitchen scissors. I only use these for freshies. That's why they're disgusting. I do not use these for my actual kitchen. So then I'm gonna cut off the edges. This is actually um, optional. I actually never used to do this, but then when I actually tried it, I think the freshies do look better without the points. It's personal preference. It's all up to you. I've actually had a customer leave me a review saying that she didn't like the points. So it's really up to you and your customers, whatever you think looks best. But I, I actually do think this is a cleaner look. You see, it looks so beautiful. So decorating your freshie is always gonna be optional. I get these cute little sunflowers on Amazon. I'll link them in the description. They're very inexpensive, but they do have a little back piece like that. So I cut it off with my kitchen scissors, just like that. It went somewhere flying. Then I'm gonna get my hot glue gun. Excuse it, it's been through some things. Then I'm just gonna put a little dot of glue like that. I guess that's a big dot. Um, and then I'm gonna press the sunflower right there, just like that. And I'm gonna hold it down for about five to 10 seconds to make sure that it stays very well and it cools down. And there is your cute little freshie. Then you're gonna grab your twine or string. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use twine and then you just put it in the hole and you can make the string as long or as short as you'd like. I do it long just because the customer can always cut it if they want to or they can adjust it, you know? And then I tie the ends for them just like that. And there you go. Isn't it so cute? So this is how I make a car freshie. This is just what works for me. This is what I've learned along the way. Everyone does do it differently. When making car freshies, the ideas are actually endless. Like there's so many colors and combos that you can do. You can add so many different accessories. If you guys have any questions that I might not have went over in the video, please leave them down below. I will be sure to answer you guys. Everything that I use in this video is gonna be linked in the description down below. Please give this video a like if you learned anything or if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so, so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Bye guys.